like this video, why not subscribe? Welcome to Q&A Mondays, everyone. I'm your host, Matt Haslam. And as always, if you want your question on the show, please go to mhnews.info and submit using our new online form. You can also comment below on Facebook or YouTube, private message me on Facebook, or see me in real life. Uh, plenty of ways to get us your questions. So first question today, Dolly or Slider? Um, I think Dolly is a much better choice for two reasons. First off, it's cheaper, and secondly, it can be uh, infinitely expandable, and I'll explain that in just a second. A slider, basically, if you want it raised off the ground, um, first off, it only goes so far. It's 36 inches, 48 inches, 42 inches, whatever it might be, but it can only go so far. You can't, like, connect a whole bunch together, um, and if you did, it would be really expensive. Um, so basically, that in, in itself is expensive. You also need two tripods to lift it off the ground if you want to lift it off the ground. You need a ball head with a fluid head on the top of it in order to get moving shots and stuff like that that really look really great on a slider. Um, and then for that, you also need a riser, which is another $100. So that's awfully expensive for what it gets you. Um, general rule of thumb on a slider is if it's 36 inches long, you can only get a subject that's 36 inches away from your slider and your camera. So that's generally the rule. Whatever your slider is in length, that's how far away your subject has to be within. So a slider is for more close-up things. Um, however, a slider cannot do the job of a dolly. That said, a dolly can do the job of a slider. So um, my pick would be the dolly because uh, basically you're having, uh, what is it, $150 dolly system on your bottom of your tripod and then that goes on PVC pipe or anything you have lying around. Um, I use SS20 top rail from Fence that you commonly see in chain link fence um, because my dad owns a fence company and it's kind of easy for me to get a hold of that and, and borrow it from his company for a couple days for my stuff. Secondly on that it has um, interlocking ends on it so you can basically expand that each side of your track as far as you want. We've had up to like, I think a hundred feet of track already using SS20 pipe, um, just all along a trail. You use like apple boxes or sandbags to kind of level it out. But for the most part, you can go as long as you want. Um, it's just a whole lot better. Um, and then with that, it raises your tripod up so that your tripod becomes your fluid head. So you don't need an extra one. Um, really there's no disadvantage of a dolly. Dollies can do the job of a slider, sliders can't do the job of a dolly, so if I had to pick one, I'm going to pick a dolly. That said, if you're walking into a forest or some of that and you can only carry so much, maybe a slider is the way to go because you can put a slider on your back and sling it over your shoulder. So that might be the way to go if you're looking for more close up things. If you're looking for more far away things or following an actor or something like that, and you don't want to invest in a $10,000 steady cam, dollies are the way to go. Next question. What do you guys do in your spare time? <laughs> you say that like we have spare time. Um, we don't have spare time. It's 24 seven around here, 365, especially on holidays we work. Um, that's because of the whole event space that we're in. If it was just the filmmaking, we probably would end up working, what, 40, 45, 50 hours a week, I'm going to say. Um, but because of the event spaces and doing audio and lighting, we're probably upwards of 60. So um, there is no time off. The time off that I get um, is spent, you know, trying to enjoy as much as I possibly can, um, trying to watch Netflix. <laughs> Um, in my spare time or TV or go see the movie with my friends or go to a music park. But then again, every time that kind of moment arises when I can actually enjoy something, um, you have to realize you're in the entertainment business. So uh, pretty much anywhere I go, I'm analyzing. Like the other day I went to the movies and the entire time I'm sitting there, how'd they do that shot? Where are their lights? Where were their lights for that shot? 
Um, or were there cameras and stuff like that? So it's kind of like you're just analyzing the movie and, you know, kind of critiquing it in a way. And you're like dissecting it all apart and going, where was everything? You know, how can I do, how can I recreate that shot? You know, if I was the director, how would I have done differently? Um, that kind of thing. So um, that's my spare time. As you can see, there's not that much actual spare time. Just the way it goes, I think. Um, you can have spare time. Go ahead and enjoy that spare time if you can afford it. But for me, this is my 24-7 thing. And I'm happy with that. You know, uh, My spare time, I try as much as I can to relax. Um, next question. What was the single hardest obstacle you've had to overcome, either in a project or just as a production company in general? And how did you handle it? Um, how did... Okay, so the hardest challenge I've ever had to overcome was my age, by far. I still haven't overcome it completely because I'm 23. Um, people just don't trust people my age. And maybe there's a good reason for that, but um, I think people should give people a chance. Um, my entire life, since I was like 10 years old, I've been running a company and I've been running engineering events and stuff, so... You know, it's it's the thing where I've had people come over to me at events, and they'll walk right past me. And I'll stand there at the control board, and I'll stand there at the light board. People will walk right past me to uh, one of my staff behind me, who's like 60 years old, and they'll constantly ask him, "Are you Matt Haslam?" And I'm, I'm just like, "Dude, I'm I'm right here," you know. And then, basically, my guy forwards them and says, hey, that, that's Matt over there at the control board. Why would I be Matt Haslam? I'm just a stage crew. Um, and people are shocked, and then they walk away. They're like, oh, well, I guess they're thinking if it's engineered by a 23-year-old, that's obviously not that good. But <laughs> there's a reason why they came over to me in the first place, you know, because they think it sounded, they thought it was sound good. Um, you know, I've had that before in my life, and I'll have it again. And my main obstacle has been my age being so young and having so much experience of I'm doing these mega events where, you know, people have this distrust of do I have enough experience? Um, I think 13 years of experience, 24-7, having classes in it. I think um, having no personal life kind of says... I have the experience. That's the hardest obstacle. And how I overcome that is by just keep going, keep doing events, keep doing films. And if people watch my films and say, man, that director is really cool. And then they find out I'm 23. Most people that watch my work before they find out my age are shocked. Most people that find out my age don't give my work a chance. That's my biggest obstacle. So I just say, keep going with what you're going and don't worry about age because it's only a number. All right, before we get to our next question, we're going to thank our sponsors. We'll be right back. If you need professional gear, but you don't have that much money to spend, well, then you're in some luck. Matt has some productions equipment sales division just added over 150 items. That's over $20,000 of our biggest and baddest gear all for clearance pricing, and we need to get rid of it and get rid of it soon. We need to make some room around here to make room for some new equipment coming in, so we seriously need to get it gone fast. So please go to bit.ly forward slash equipment sales for more information on the equipment itself, including moving head spotlights, LED park cans, mixers, speakers, cameras, lighting stands, a whole bunch more, all at bit.ly forward slash equipment sales, all for clearance pricing, so please go there and check it out. Next question. How can a filmmaker make a living off of narratives? I think unless... It sounds to me like your question is you want to know how you apparently like doing narratives and you want to keep doing them and you want to know how to get enough clients to in that space to just do that. For me, it, that's what it sounds like. And I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. But unless you have an infinite amount of calls right now on narratives and you're getting a bunch of work in it where you don't see yourself running out of narrative work for the next probably year then I would definitely 
I expand your horizons. Little short thing I'm gonna tell you on that. Um, basically, when I started out, I was just doing music videos, and then I realized, you know, hey, I'm not doing any audio. I'm not recording any audio anywhere I'm going. So for me, I wanted to expand, and I started doing little interviews and stuff like that. And from that, I learned, hey, I'm learning how to record great audio now. And then I started to learn how to do really good lighting for inter for interviews. And the fa the human face is the hardest thing you will ever do in filmmaking, the hardest thing you will ever light. Um, it is by far the most challenging because there's so many shadows. But through interviews, I've learned how to light a f human's face. I've learned how to do that. And so now I can take all that knowledge in interviews and apply it to my music videos so I can light music videos well. Um, no matter where you go in filmmaking, you're gonna learn something that you can apply to other fields of filmmaking. So go out there and do it. Don't worry about it being in a certain area unless you have enough work that you'll never run out in that area right now don't worry about getting everything in that area. Don't advertise yourself that you're only doing narratives because as a professional filmmaker, you should be able to go anywhere, do anything, and still do it really well. Last question. How do you get start? How do you get start getting your content around slash noticed when you have no other connections? Um, if you're looking to be the next YouTube star, don't count on it. Um, I don't. Um, no one does. Um, even if you ask Rhett and, Rhett and, Rhett and Link, um, who are the most successful YouTube stars ever, even if you ask them, in their Q&A recently, they said, there's no formula to become a YouTube star. There's no formula to this. There's no path you must take in if you want to become a YouTube sensation. There's absolutely nothing. You can have one video and it can go viral, or you can have a hundred thousand videos and they have no views. So it becomes this thing of how do you get your content out there to people that matter, not just everyone? Because let's face it, there's so much uploaded to YouTube every second. So how do you get your content out that there's someone who's gonna care about what you say? So first off, create a good storyline. Always tell good content, um, and, and that's the main purpose of this show. Um, for this show, I don't care how my hair looks. I don't care, you know, how the video or the audio looks or sounds. I don't care about the set. Um, I like the set, and I like how the audio sounds. I like how the lighting is. I like the setup. Um, I like the overall show of you know everything, but I'm not going to change that because I like doing it and that's kind of, and it, that has to come out in your videos. If you don't have a passion for your videos, if someone looks at one of your videos, they're gonna notice that right away and they're gonna go, this guy doesn't care, you know? Um, you have to genuinely care about what you're making videos on. The next thing is to tag your videos. So basically uh, take some channels that really are in the same area you are of course you want something unique to your channel. For instance, MH News here, we do videos on live events. And so that's different, that's so much different. There's no other channel out there that's teaching live events every week. Um, there's filmmaker shows, but no live event shows. So that's kind of our unique quality is we're teaching everything entertainment. So basically with that, we found different channels such as Film Right, and we're tagging them on every single video and saying, you know, if you like Film Right, you're gonna like us. If you like Frugal Filmmaker, you're gonna like us. If you like this, if you like that, you're gonna like us, you know? Um, that's how you get yourself out there. You wanna have a bunch of great quality content, and then once you have that quality content, people are gonna start watching uh, because you're tagging yourself with people that are similar, you know? Um, that's our questions for today. If you want your question on the show, please go to mhnews.info and submit using our new online form. You can also comment below on Facebook or YouTube, private message me on Facebook, or see me in real life. You can do that. I'm a real person, you know? Um, but 
that's it for this week. If you like this video, like and subscribe to our channel and check us out every Monday for a Q&A episode and every Thursday for a how-to episode. Have a great week, everyone. See us next time. Bye.